These are the worst major decisions NBA teams have made that have made no sense at all. We're not looking at bad decisions by players or bad draft day decisions by teams. Well, except for two. And the first is necessary because the Golden State Warriors have been making so many bad decisions recently and they're all connected. And it all started in 2020 when Golden State has the second overall pick in the draft and they tell LaMelo Ball they're gonna select him with that pick. Well, their time comes and instead they choose James Wiseman because they felt like they needed a center and then he could round out their lineup nicely. Instead of picking the 6'8 point guard with superstar potential, the Warriors picked the big man who played just three games in college. But no, it was smart because they already had a point guard in Steph Curry. They wouldn't want to have two of them, right? Well, then we fast forward. The Warriors then continuously turned on trade offers for young guys like Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga because they want to keep young players for the future. They miss out on getting more stars to win now so they can be ready when this current era is over. And that all blows over with an eventual NBA championship thanks to a lot of help from new up-and-comer Jordan Poole. And now in the past two years since that title, the Warriors traded James Wiseman for Gary Payton II and Jordan Poole for Chris Paul. But wait, I thought the reason they didn't draft Lamelo was so they wouldn't have two point guards on the same team. The reason they missed out on trade opportunities was because they wanted to keep and build their young talent. So things were starting to not add up here. Then they signed Draymond Green to a long-term deal, and now they're losing the trust of these young players because they're not getting enough playing time. So as a result of all of this and Golden State's indecisiveness, they've messed up their hopes at having a championship team and their hopes at having a young future because they now have Gary Payton instead of LaMelo Ball, Draymond Green instead of Jordan Poole, and are choosing Andrew Wiggins instead of Kaminga. And none of those veterans are helping this team make wins. How many bad decisions can one team possibly make? It's no wonder why the Warriors aren't even a playoff team right now. The Sacramento Kings are a playoff team and it seems like fans are still pretty split on if they made a great trade with the Indiana Pacers or a massive mistake by basically trading Tyrese Halliburton for DeMontis Sabonis. Both teams got dramatically better after the trade. The Pacers instantly became a playoff threat with Halliburton averaging 24 and 12 and the Kings finished with 20 more wins the next season while having DeMontis and MVP talks. But the real debate here is on if the Kings should have kept Tyrese instead and traded De'Aaron Fox. It makes it hard to argue seeing how De'Aaron's now averaging 28 a game. But but the fact that Tyrese isn't even close to his prime yet and that the Kings still look like a first round playoff team is what throws some people off. Personally, I think it's a win-win for both sides, even though the Kings still have work to do. Well, on the other hand, there's no debate at all that the Dallas Mavericks messed up by letting Jalen Brunson walk. They drafted him and helped him develop into a star. Then they had the opportunity to sign him to a four-year $55 million extension in 2021. They decided not to and wait until the offseason to see if anything better came along. Well, they didn't expect him to play like a superstar in the playoffs and average 21 a game, which made the Knicks give him a four-year $100 million deal. Brunson's even come out and said that he would have signed that extension with Dallas had they offered it to him, but instead it didn't happen. And it's just rough to see because had they drafted Jalen and signed him to that contract, that's when championship teams happen. Jalen was the perfect complement to Luka, so they would have had him and so much money left to spend on the rest of the roster. Similar to when Steph Curry signed a smaller deal then developed into an MVP the next season. That was the only reason they were able to sign Kevin Durant. Jalen and Luka were so good together and now they have to watch him become an all NBA type point guard in New York while Dallas had to trade away assets just to get Kyrie Irving in return as a replacement. Then they had to watch Jalen put up 28 5 and 5 in the postseason last year while the Mavs were sitting at home. And even this season Jalen's putting up far better numbers than Kyrie is across the board. But while we're speaking of Luka I quickly wanted to mention how bad the Suns messed up by drafting DeAndre Aiden over him first overall. I know I said no drafts but this one's so bad because with all the accomplishments Doncic had Already up until that point, it should have been a no-brainer. DeAndre Ayton's not even on the Suns anymore, and they traded him for Yusuf Nurkic. And worst of all, had they drafted Luka, it would have avoided one of their most embarrassing nights in Phoenix Suns history. And we can add the Philadelphia 76ers to the list of great playoff teams that could have had championship potential had it not been for letting a player walk. When Philly chose Tobias Harris over Jimmy Butler, and the whole situation was a mess. They traded three players to bring Jimmy in in 2018, and Jimmy was in the last year of his contract. Contract. So was Tobias Harris and so was Ben Simmons. So the super team teams up and they didn't look amazing together, but it's still been Philly's best shot at an NBA title in the Joel Embiid era. If it wasn't for Kawhi Leonard, they could have been NBA champions. So that offseason comes around and the 76ers decide to give Ben Simmons a max contract and Tobias Harris a max deal, leaving no money left for Jimmy who instead has to sign with the Miami Heat. Butler was fully ready to re-sign with Philly had they offered him a deal, but it just never came. And it's been rough for them ever since. Tobias 
Tobias has been overpaid and untradeable, while Jimmy's been the better player in every aspect. He led his team to the NBA Finals the very next season, eliminated Philly from the playoffs two years later, and just made his second Finals last year with a team with a lot less talent. From a talent perspective, the decision to not sign Tobias over Jimmy made it one of the worst moves in 76ers history. But seeing what Butler did since then has made it one of the worst moves in league history. Now with all this talk of players like Ben Simmons, it should remind us how terrible it's been that the Brooklyn Nets actually traded for him. I mean, let's first look at what Brooklyn gave up to get James Harden in the first place. It was Jared Allen, Torian Prince, Karis LeVert, three first round picks and four first round pick swaps. Then just one year later, all of this was turned into Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, and two first round picks. And of course, this was a Ben Simmons who was in the middle of a year long holdout because the team hurt his feelings. He also had a back injury and mental health issues. The Nets traded for this player thinking they were going to be able to turn his career back around and have him as their superstar player for years to come. When instead he's used every one of those excuses and problems to have only played 48 total games in the past two seasons while averaging six points a game for them. Sure, James Harden made it clear he wanted out of the Nets at the time, so the team was put in a little bit of a disadvantage, but this was the Harden that was only one year removed from being the Rockets 34 point per game superstar. He was still on the Nets putting up 24, 10, and 8 over an extended period of time. So they could have traded him to anywhere else in the league and any other situation and gotten a much better return for him. And if they did, the Nets would be in a much better position right now. But instead, they still have been under contract for the next two years. And oddly enough, in an entire full circle moment, James Harden just so happens to be the Clippers' current point guard, which is the same position they made an all-time major mistake for. And this, of course, was when they traded Shea Gilgis Alexander and seven first round picks to bring in Paul George. The Thunder traded for Shea based on his potential. And I mean, even if he turned out to be nothing, seven first round picks is enough to bring in any player. So the fact that they gave up all those picks and Shea turned out to be a top 10 player in the entire league just four years later is what makes this so catastrophically bad. Of course, they needed to make the trade to bring in both PG and Kawhi Leonard. And of course, they then needed a point guard, but managed to get both Russell Westbrook and James Harden to fill those roles. And of course, the Clippers are looking great these days. But just imagine if it was Shea, Kawhi, and they still had all of those extra assets that they could have used to bring in other players. Kawhi Leonard's name came up there a few times, and this isn't the only disaster scenario one of his teams were involved in, because of course the other was the San Antonio Spurs. He was San Antonio's homegrown superstar. He started in the Big Three era, won a title with them, then blossomed into their new go-to guy on both ends of the floor. The quiet, low-profile Kawhi couldn't have been any of a better fit than in San Antonio. He was everything the Spurs represent. Well, in the 2017 preseason, he has a right quadriceps injury, and this was the beginning of the end. Because he missed the start of the season so he could rehab it, Spurs doctors then cleared him to return, so he did. For only about nine games, then he went to his own doctors to get a second opinion, and they recommended he continue to sit out, so he did, and didn't play again until he felt right. But that point never came. He kept telling the media and the team that he'd be back soon, but then months and months went on and their superstar player never returned. It started to get everyone upset too. Popovich told the media, I'll be surprised if he returns this season. We only have this many games left and he's still not ready to go. Manu Ginobili later on told them, for me, he's not coming back because it's not helping to think that he's going to return. We fell for it a week ago again. And apparently when Tony Parker told reporters, I understand what Kawhi's going through. I had the same injury and it took me out for eight months, but when I had it, it was a hundred times worse. So that was the final straw for Kawhi. Apparently he didn't tell anybody anything so none of the players or coaches knew what was going on with them. So they held a players only meeting to try to figure it all out which didn't solve anything. And apparently only made Kawhi more upset. So clearly he was already checked out at this point and it was proven by the fact that he didn't even travel with the team to their playoff games and instead stayed in New York to rehab. Then after the season he unsurprisingly left them. I think he lost a lot of trust when they made him come back from that injury too early. And at that point he didn't want to return again until he was certain his knee was fixed. Then when they kept pressuring him to come back, they completely lost his trust. Unless Kawhi was always just trying to find his way to play in LA, I think the team having better communication with him could have kept him from leaving the San Antonio Spurs for next to nothing. They won so much with him and haven't won anything at all except for the number one overall pick since he left. I'm sure there will be plenty of more terrible mistakes by NBA teams in the future, but right now these are all of the most recent. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'm out.